All right, Nick, let's talk about the Texas A&M Aggies. As new head coach, Mike Elko has taken over this program. I think he has this team flipped around 180 degrees, heading in the right direction from where things were kind of going in a couple different aspects under Jimbo Fisher. I think recruiting is back on track. I think the culture on Texas A&M is back on track. And now I think they're making some interesting decisions to show their support of you know current and former players as well. Let's get into this article, and then I want to hear your opinions on this on the other side. This, of course, is from Gigum Gazette. Great name, by the way. Texas A&M Football Pro Day will be next Tuesday, March 19th. A recent phenomenon with regard to this is schools allowing former players to come back and audition for teams, even those who've been in the league for some times already, the league being the NFL, of course. In that vein, it has been announced that Kellen Mond will throw at A&M's Pro Day. Nick, I think this is a really interesting update about Texas A&M. I think they're sending a message to current and former players alike. I want to know what your thoughts are on this one, but A&M fans in the comment section below, with this recent update, with this news, I want you to think back. Who are some players that you think would be deserving at a second shot to kind of audition at a Texas A&M and Pro Day who didn't get their fair shake in the NFL? Let us know who, what kind of players you think from Texas A&M deserve to come to this sort of pro day event in the comment section below. But Nick, what are your thoughts on this recent update by Texas A&M? So I think it's very interesting. And the actual story goes even farther than that. It's not just players that are now in the National Football League or were in the National Football League in this pro day. There are players that are trying to go to the NFL that haven't played at all in the National Football League that transferred out of Texas A&M, namely guys like uh, Caleb Chapman, Jalen Preston, and Andre White Jr., according to uh, Cardo Carroll's. And look, I think this is a very smart move by Mike Elko and company. When you pair this with the addition of Trev Alberts, who's coming down to College Station from the University of Nebraska, I think what we're seeing right now is a seismic shift in the mentality of the program. And I think that's really smart. It's sort of a zig where everyone else is zagging. For anyone who's followed college football really closely over the past week or so, everyone's heard former Alabama coach Nick Saban complain about how monetized the college football recruiting and transfer game has become, in which every recruit and every recruit family member is asking about how much money can we get paid to go to your school, whether through an NIL collective or otherwise, right? And that just has damaged the mentality of the game, according to Nick Saban. What AM, Elko, Alberts, the new, obviously heading in, new guy as well. What they are focusing on doing here is they are zigging the other way. They're saying, listen, we're focused. Now, granted, AM is going to pay an IL money. Of course, that's going to happen. But they're also focused on keeping those relationships strong, even if you transfer out. If you've been an Aggie for five seconds, you will always be an Aggie. And having that mentality in the program, that goes a long way for winning in the recruiting game and the transfer portal game because it stands out. If you're competing against Texas, if you're competing against LSU, if you're competing against Oklahoma, if you're competing against Alabama for recruits, right? If those other four guys go into the recruits, meet with those other first four schools, and the meeting goes like this, hey, listen, we can give you $200,000 of NIL money. The recruit goes, that's nice. That's good. And then they go to College Station. And they sit there and says, listen, we can give you $200,000 of NIL money. And even if you leave and transfer, we'll still support you when you try and go pro. That just blew the recruit and the recruit's family's mind like, this, this program not only gives us the NIL money, they also care like an old school program in terms of the recruiting and the relationships. That's next level thinking, next level strategy. Differentiation is how you win in the sales market. Recruiting is a sales game. I love this move from Texas A&M because it sets them apart from their competition. Yeah, Nick, and we've seen this time and time again. I love the point you brought up, you know, the new versus the old money versus, you know, being a family. That is something I think we're going to see in the future. The, the happy medium is blending of the two. We yeah. see the old ways. We see the Clemsons of the world. Clemson, they were all about family, all about culture, and they've kind of fallen off, especially in days of NIL, because their neglect of trying to embrace this new culture. But we see a team like Oklahoma, who Brent Venables came from Clemson. He is embracing the NIL, but still has that strong family aspect to his recruiting game. And I think Kellen, or Kellen Mond coming back to Texas A&M is an example of that. And as well as these other guys I want to talk about as well. But Mike Elko showing he has a nice blend of, of course, like you said, Texas A&M's got plenty of money to pay players for NIL. But still, they show they care about those players. And I like the point you brought up about once an Aggie for five seconds, always an Aggie. You got guys like White and Chapman. White went to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech isn't quite as big of a school as a school like Texas A&M. 
And so they're like, hey, we're going to take you back. We want to, you know, highlight you. Not as many people are going to be watching Georgia Tech's Pro Day as they would at school like Texas A&M. I think that shows they care about this guy, even though he left. They want to show him, you know, we still support you, even though they don't have to do anything for him. But on the other hand, you have Chapman. He went to Oregon. Oregon's just as big as Texas A&M. But still, even though he went to a school that's just as big, they're saying, hey, if you want to do your pro day at Texas A&M, we welcome you with open arms. No love lost between us. We always loved you. You're always a naggy. We want you back. So I think this is building that culture down in uh, Texas A&M, down in College Station, showing that they are all love, but also we all know that they have the money to pay the NIL as well. And I really like the job that Coach Mike Elko has done here. Yeah, and I think you said it perfectly. It's the blend of the old and the new. You don't want to be old like Clemson. Clemson, I think, is on the decline. But you don't want to be like too businesslike and too just suit and corporate. I think that's going to turn a lot of people off. I think we're seeing a lot of programs kind of turn in that direction. But if you can blend those two together, you can become a recruiting powerhouse. And as good as Jimbo Fisher recruited at times, it was too much, in my opinion, sort of collecting talent, all business and corporate like that's the money at the problem. At least that was the allegations thrown against Texas A&M, but focusing again under this new regime on both those relationships, once an Aggie, always an Aggie and the high dollars that comes with being Texas A&M and college station and all that. I think the blending of the two is the path to success for this football program. <laughs>